In the previous video, we saw what is Maven and how you can use Maven to solve your bill problems. In this particular video, we are going to see what are the different life cycles of the Maven project. If you create a Maven project, these are the different life cycles which you will be getting along with the project. Let's see what are the different life cycles and how we can use them in your project. Let's get started. So there are uh, more than 20 Maven uh, life cycles provided by Maven out of the box and you can use these different life cycles for different types of processings, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go through each and every life cycle and I will just give you an uh, example if suppose it is complex to understand, right? So the first and the foremost um, uh, life cycle is the clean. So any, any project, if you consider, you will do a clean. So clean is going to clean up your uh, target folder. So if you had noticed that uh, Maven creates all the class files under the folder called target. And if you run the Maven clean, it is going to remove the target folder. So basically it is just going to wash out all the class files, resources, all the necessary files, which was created in the previous build in as a part of the clean um, life cycle. So clean is not a part of the life cycle as such, but uh, still clean is a process which we follow most of the time to make sure our build is clean every time we build our project. So that is clean. So apart from the clean, uh, what else do we have, right? So there is something called validate. So validate, um, what it does, it checks your project. It goes through your pom.xml. So as you guys saw, uh, Maven uses the pom.xml. It goes through the pom.xml. It goes through different um, XML tags and identifies is uh, if there are any problems in the current project okay so it also checks what are the different profiles it also checks whether the dependencies are currently mentioned and it also checks if the necessary processes or the life cycles are mentioned to complete the build process so that is what validate does so if you want to make sure if your form.xml entries are perfect then you can use the validate option so you can do a maven validate so the command for that is mvm space validate if you give that particular task, Maven is going to run with a validate lifecycle. Okay. The next one is initialize. So Maven initializes nothing but um, it initializes the states for the particular um, um, project. So for example, if you want to load the properties, okay, so you can put them in the initialize phase. So when you are writing in the pom.xml, I'll, I'll show you how to create profiles and how to use these lifecycles uh, in the next video. But uh, just understand that initialize um, is where you want to initialize all your property files for um, usage in the different phases of your uh, build life cycle. So you can use initialize for that. So that is the initialize state. So in general, people use or the plugin um, developers use initialize for initializing some properties for usage down the lane. Right. The next one is the generate sources. Uh, generate sources are nothing but creation of source code um, which are included into your compilation phase itself right so this generates uh, the uh, package which can be um, used for seeing the source code so for example if you are um, having a spring uh, right you have spring documentation or the spring source code along with the spring project so that you can use it for references right so when you download your um, maven dependencies you can um, package hyphen sources for your library and that will be shipped along with your uh, jar Right. So that is where um, generate sources help. It generates the source files as well along with the package which you are generating. For example, if uh, there is a Java project, you can create a jar and along with that you create a hyphen sources jar which will be useful for decoding your code when you want to um, debug stuff. So that is generate sources. Um, process sources when you, uh, is when you want to do something um, based on some value inside um, the uh, um, uh, processing right inside the source code right so then you can use source um, process sources so you can use the process sources um, life cycle to do any filtering based on um, this particular um, file names or something like that so let's say if you want to um, filter out some specific files which you don't want to um, package along with the product you can use that in the uh, process sources so that is the process sources you can process the source files and you can filter out stuff if you don't want it. 
generate resources is where uh, you can generate the uh, you can um, uh, push the property files or uh, sql files or something which you require um, in the runtime and you need it to be packaged so let's say you have some uh, um, xml files to be loaded for example spring xmls or you want to load the application properties so those needs to be taken care of as a part of generated resources so you can generate these uh, resources and then push that to the package right so that is when generate resources help so these can be included along with the package so our package here i mean is the final uh, metadata or the um, uh, zip or the jar or the var which we finally create right process resources uh, same way uh, if you want to process some specific um, property files you can filter them out so let's say if you want to copy only uh, files of a particular pattern you can do that similar to how you do the process sources you can do the process resources the next uh, major step is the maven compile so compile is a stage where all our source codes are compiled right so basically all your source codes get converted into the um, binary uh, code or class files or whatever format um, which we need to ship it in so all these gets moved to the target folder as a part of the compile stage right process classes so process classes is a, a step where you can generate the files from the compilation stage okay for example uh, if you want to optimize uh, some code as a part of the compilation stage right you want to optimize some class files let's say the class is so huge you want to optimize that you can do that as a part of the process classes the next one is generate test sources as the name suggests you can generate test uh, source code for the test classes if you want to have documentation for the test classes as well process test resources uh, same way for filtering out the test sources which we created test compile is for compiling um, all your tests as a part of the test compile stage right so that is test compile the next one is uh, process test classes so uh, uh, similar to how we um, uh, compile we do the test compilation using the test uh, life cycle so as a part of the test life cycle all the tests will be run so after that you can process those classes using the process test classes so you can generate files from those um, code which we compiled all right so that is the process test classes the next one is the um, prepare package so as a part of the prepare package uh, let's say you want to copy some uh, files or you want to generate some files before the package is ready you can do those as a part of the prepare package so let's say you want to um, create some uh, json files right you want to create uh, json files out of the schema you can do that as a part of the prepare package or something like that right and these are absolutely mandatory for the package so that is why they are um, there as a pre um, uh, prepare package right the next one is the package um, package is where all the compiled codes are now zipped or, or compressed into a format which um, you will be able to distribute to um, other people right for example jars or wars or um, um, enterprise uh, uh, ers or zips etc right so those are the packages so package step is the final step which is going to compress everything which we need pre integration test so pre integration test is where uh, you want to do some initialization or um, for example if you are running an integration test and you need your tomcat okay you need to start the tomcat you can do that as a part of pre integration step right so that is one example of usage of pre integration step or loading the data into your in memory database you can do that as a part of pre integration test integration test as the name suggests you can um, uh, uh, run all your uh, integration tests as a part of the integration test phase um, it can um, have all these environment variables and you can process and deploy them as a part of the integration test so if you want to deploy the application into a remote machine you can do that as a part of integration test and run the tests over them post integration step um, is the opposite of pre integration where whatever we started there we can do a clean up in the post integration test right so next step is the verify so verify is to uh, check if the packages are all um, um, perfectly packaged and if they meet the exact uh, uh, standards in which they should be shipped so if we do the verify it will automatically check the jars whether the quality of the jars are
perfect whether people will be able to unzip the jars in the right format so that is what verify does install install is also um, um, similar to the package the only thing is install will move that um, package to the local repository so this will um, move the package to the local repository so that other projects can be taking uh, other projects can be um, referring to these um, local repositories can be accessible so if there if let's say i have two different projects i create a, um, uh, all these are local and if i do a clean install this is going to ship my package onto the local repository the other project is going to take the latest version from the local repository automatically so install is going to do that for you the final thing is the deploy so deploy um, copies the package whatever we build right so it copies the package from the local to the remote repository so install copied from local to local repository deploy is going to copy from local to remote repository so remote repository is required when you want to share your code with uh, others so that is when the remote repository is required so if you are in a firm if you are in an enterprise um, uh, firm you will be uh, using your own instance where you will be deploying all your applications onto that particular maven repository or uh, artifactory or something like that um, you have a central place where you can push all your um, artifacts and from there you can distribute it to different teams or different um, consumers right so those are the different life cycles um, which maven provides so i hope uh, you guys understood uh, each one of them in the next video we are going to see how we can use these and how uh, profiles uh, tie up with these and how we can use maven profiles um, as a part of our build life cycle okay hope you like the video if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much